Hey everybody, James here with Common Clay Life. Uh, it's been a long time since I put up a video. Um, had a lot of drama. Um, pretty much the whole family had COVID twice since the last time I released a video. But i um, really excited to do some unboxing. I bought pretty much everything I need to start bass fishing from a kayak. My budget was right at $3,000. That's for the kayak, all the equipment that I needed to operate it, and all of the stuff I need to safely go bass fishing uh, on the lakes here in Colorado um, from a kayak. I do have a kayak coming. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what brand it is or what specific kayak, but let me know down in the comments if you want me to spoil it, if you wanna wait for another video. All right, with that said, let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in. I'm very excited. <laughs> so I apologize if I get a little bit giddy. I've been waiting a while for everything to come in so that I could do this all at once. So super excited. A so this is the Yak Attack mount. This is going to be for my fish finder. So very important, so I can track mount the fish finder. Uh, I do have my little buddy here. <laughs> it's a little straw man uh, trash can. It'll collect all the trash for me. I'll go into another package here. All right, this is the original fish grip in blue. Kind of cool. We've got a guy in the back with a big red fish. Super cool. Very important for making sure I can uh, release the bass unharmed. Ah, it's a yak gear, paddle, and rod leash. So, it's a two-pack, and uh, can use that to make sure that my fishing poles and my paddle don't have the opportunity to escape while I'm out on the water. So, um, I'm brand new to kayaking. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing everything as safely as possible. Please let me know in the comments if I missed something. And uh, if you know of anything that can make my fishing more enjoyable or safer, please do let me know. So this is a Hurricane Stringer. Uh, it's got 10 stainless steel clips. It's supposed to be pretty good quality. Um, for all of you pure catch and release guys out there, I will apologize. Um, I don't plan on bringing home everything I catch, but uh, there are walleye and trout in the lakes that I'm gonna be fishing, and so I do plan on having fish dinner from time to time. So I need a way to keep them alive while I'm out on the water. Now I'm gonna move on to the boxes. Um, I did wanna point out, um, the knife that I'm going to be using for opening the boxes, it's a um, Kershaw, uh, it's Kershaw Leak. Um, uh, focus, focus, focus. So it's a cool little knife. Um, I did get the one that has the um, 1660 CB uh, knife steel with the D2 tool steel for the blade. So I don't know if we can get a good focus on that, but um, very cool knife, um, very easy to open. And uh, it does actually have an interesting little safety feature on it. It's got a lock that'll lock the blade closed. Um, a lot of people have said that they don't um, find that that useful, but I will occasionally put it on um, so that it doesn't end up in the wash coming open. So 
very cool little knife. I'll also leave a link to this in the description below. All right, first box. Oh, that's heavy. Let's see. All right, lots of stuff. I have a 20 liter dry bag. Um, once again, you guys tell me if you have any thoughts about any of this stuff. I did buy this, uh, it's from Earth Pack, and I intentionally looked for one. Um, it's kind of a little bit more expensive than a lot of the stuff that's on Amazon. I'm trying to get something that wasn't cheap junk. So it's important to me that the stuff that I'm buying, everything I think so far has been a brand na uh, name brand. Um, I really just, it's not that I want to spend more money on stuff, but I want it to last. I want to be able to have all the stuff that I'm buying for a long time. And so I really tried hard to avoid buying cheap junk as opposed to inexpensive, good quality stuff. So bear that in mind while I'm doing this. Um, funnily enough, I do think this may fall under the cheap junk category, but I bought a bunch of these little bungees um, with clips on the ends of them. <clears throat> I do have some carabiners I can use if I need um, to attach the other end, or I can just use these. They all have pretty nice keychains on the end. Um, these are that kind of low quality, um, they're, you know, they're, they're Chinese. Um, but they had really good reviews, and the number one thing I looked for on Amazon, not so much that they had good reviews, but they didn't have any bad reviews. So a lot of times when you're on Amazon shopping, you can see something that's 4.5 stars, 1,800 reviews. Go ahead and click into the one stars, uh, especially if there are more one stars than there are th two or three stars typically is a sign that somebody's paid to put a bunch of good reviews in and the real customers are giving a poor review. So look through the negative reviews first and see what are, what are people complaining about. Sometimes it'll just be somebody complaining about the shipping. Sometimes it may be one or two people who had a problem with the, with the um, you know, whatever the product is, but sometimes it'll be dozens of people saying, I can't believe there's so many five stars. It's just junk. It broke when I picked it up and uh, I got it replaced and the second one broke when I picked it up too. It's just junk. So I don't want them to break <laughs> while I'm out of the water, but I did think that this is a relatively low risk item. So I got some of these little lanyards for some of the lighter duty stuff. Got one more box inside here and this is doesn't seem to be marked, so <laughs> very exciting. Mystery box, quite heavy. Uh, aha, this is my anchor. So, very simple claw type anchor. We call them grapnel. So, uh, it should get the job done. I will retie this. Um, I want this attached to the bottom or the nose of the anchor, and I'll attach the top with a zip tie. Um, to make sure that if it does, if this gets caught in a rock or something, I'll be able to break, break the connection off here and pull it in backwards. At any rate, it's an anchor with a rope. Ah, cool. This is my amped outdoors lithium iron phosphate battery and this is the charger so i have a, a battery charger 
for lithium ion batteries, but they did have a note on the website. This charger resets the uh, batteries kind of like uh, battery level sensors. And so I thought it was worth it. It's, I think it was only like 20 bucks on top of the price of the battery. Um, so even though I'm on a budget, like I said, I want to make sure that I'm getting good quality stuff and I'm gonna be able to fish for a long time without having issues. Um, they threw in a sticker, that's cool, always cool. That's something else you guys can do for me. Let me know in the comments, should I put stickers all over my kayak or just keep it clean, stock looking? Let me know what you think. Got some hazardous, uh, hazardous materials information and then amp hour with the iron phosphate battery <clears throat> which I have to say is actually still even though I was expecting it to be small and light it's still impressive how little this guy is considering the amount of power that it is uh, capable of outputting okay grab another box I only ordered one thing from West Marine, so I know what this box is. <laughs> I think most everything came from Amazon. Um, I did order the Amped Outdoors battery directly from Amped Outdoors. Um, this... This is an overhead kayak hoist. And it's rated for 120 pounds. My kayak's gonna be under 100 pounds, so that's um, that works for me. There are a lot of kayak hoists on Amazon. It seemed like all of them have some pretty major drawbacks or some pretty major negative reviews. Um, this one on West Marine didn't have any reviews at all. Uh, it is branded West Marine. I understand that that can be hit or miss, uh, the quality promise of that, but I will definitely be doing a review for this on the West Marine site um, so that it can get a star rating of some sort. And I'm just really hoping that this is going to work out really well. And uh, at least for the next year or so, be a good way to get the kayak up out of the way in the garage. So I'll probably do an installation video of this as well. Pretty excited about it. I never hoisted anything up in the garage, so it'll be new, new, t new fun for me. Something else in here. Ha, okay, <laughs> so I lied. I did order two things from West Marine. Uh, this is just a six inch cleat. So I don't think that hoist system uh, has any provision for storing the rope. And so this is gonna be able to tie it off. Also add a layer of protection for, um, I, I think the, the pulley has a, the hoist system has a break built in and so that cleat will add a, a, a layer of security to that to make sure that it doesn't drop down. All right, this. Ha ha. Look at that. It's a NRS Chinook uh, life vest or PFD. You can buy a lot cheaper life jackets on Amazon or, you know, walmart.com, all kinds of places. Um, but I do think this is something that you shouldn't skimp on. So it's that simple. If you're going to spend a bunch of money to get out on the water, um, 
you want to make sure that you don't drown if something goes wrong. So that's what this is for. This is going to keep me from dying. If something goes terribly wrong, I end up knocking myself in the head or passing out and ended up in the water. This is what's going to keep me alive. So um, I'm not going to go through and make all the adjustments to put it on, but it uh, has a lot of adjustability. There's still plenty of um, strap left to open it up. So it looks like it's going to fit great and uh, beautiful. I also did get the boldest color that they had because once again, if I end up unconscious in the water, I want to be as visible as possible. So I don't want to be uh, camouflage and uh, it's cool. You know, all black everything is cool, but I am not performing special ops missions. So I think high visibility is preferable to me. A little bit bigger box here. Aha. Every kayaker's most important tool. Milk crate. <laughs> so I got one milk crate. I actually have some, uh, I have a bucket that I put some rod holders on before for kind of shore fishing. Um, I'll probably going to rob the rod holders off of that, put them onto here. And, um, this is just going to be a real simple crate. I'll tie it down on the kayak and then um, be able to put Plano boxes in here and stuff. I'm not going to go over complicated with it, but uh, I do need a place to store stuff that's easy to get to. Um, it's twin is going to go in the back of my wife's car for snow chains. Um, a little inverter for emergencies and probably some jumper cables, just some odds and ends um, that I like to keep in the car, but um, want to be able to keep them tidy. Okay. All right, this is exciting too. Get my you can see that Yakitek cell block. If you're not familiar with it, it's really a um, it's a battery box that can be mounted on a rail system on a kayak. And I'll go ahead and open this up. I also got the switchblade transducer arm. I'll mount the cell block into the rail system on the kayak. My transducer underneath this, which actually will mount onto the top of this. And then the fish finder mount goes right on top of that. So at the end of the fishing day, I can just disconnect the cell block from the rail system and throw this in the car. I have my fish finder, transducer, battery, everything all modular going to be very cool. I do love some of the uh, installations that I've seen on YouTube for wiring out the kayak and, you know, more permanently mounting um, different portions of it, like the uh, transducer and the mount for the fish finder. But I really do want to be able to move that from vessel to vessel and I'll want to move all my electronics and it's just convenient. So, technology. All right, I know everybody's been looking at this big long box. Anybody guess what it is? I can guess what it is. So I think I only ordered one thing this long. I guess coming from Amazon, it could have a bunch of other stuff in the box with it. And it is, all right. So this is the flagpole with a protection flag here. It is um, actually got a nice foam butt section. It would be able to, you'd be able to just stick it in a rod holder if you want to, but it also does have the um, trek mount on the bottom. So I'll be able to mount this on a trek. Uh, and this one has, this is a three AAA, I think. It's a AAA battery powered um, 360 degree light. 
once again, I went with the 360 light uh, with the battery operated light just because I don't want to permanently wire anything at this point in my kayak fishing career. I'm not ready to permanently mount anything to the boat, so battery operated it is. I'm confident that this being an LED light, this is going to last a really long time with one set of batteries. I can easily put three uh, AAA batteries in a little snack size Ziploc bag and keep them in the boat. So uh, if it does die, I can swap them out easily enough. So very cool. Um, once again, safety is super important. This will make sure that I am visible anytime I'm out on the water um, trying to figure out how to catch a fish. Super cool. Will you hold that for me, Mr. Strawman? Okay, thank you. All right, uh, this one, <laughs> I kept it in the pile. I had previously opened this. This is the thing I'm most excited about. Uh, it's a Garmin Echo Map 93 SV. It's the UHD version. Uh, it does have the one megahertz imaging. And um, I really had a dilemma when I was budgeting for the kayak. I knew that I was only gonna have right around $3,000 to spend. And so I had to decide if I should spend that money on a high-end fish finder and a cheaper kayak or on a high-end kayak and a cheaper fish finder. And as you can imagine, this um, is you know significantly more expensive than a lot of the cheaper fish finders. I wanted to get this though, I wanted the big screen and the side imaging technology so I could really find structure quickly. I'm going to be fishing in a lot of lakes that I'm not familiar with. I'm brand new, never boated in any of these lakes. And so I want to be able to clear water and find structure quickly. Um, and I think that having a high quality, large for a kayak, um, fish finder is gonna really help me out with, um, with locating structure that's gonna hold fish. So super excited, very awesome. It's my favorite thing, maybe beside the kayak, but that's only maybe, it's pretty awesome. Sorry, straw man, you're gonna have to scooch a little bit. Ah. Yeah, I'm gonna put you back here. All right, let's see what this one is. Um, is that an opening? Kind of a weird place to put a piece of tape. Looks like it opens on the ends. Oh, awesome. So this is the cart for wheeling the kayak around at the boat ramp. I will see if there's a picture of it in here. There we go. That is the Rad Sport Pro. So this one, it's pretty funny. Uh, it's got really good reviews on Amazon. The people who gave it negative reviews were saying that if you put the kayak on this and leave it overnight or for several hours, these uh, air-free tires they're kind of some, made out of some kind of foam. Apparently they will lose their shape. And so they'll get a flat spot on the bottom where they're sitting on the ground. Um, I don't, this is awfully hard. I imagine, I, I guess if your kayak's big enough, maybe. Maybe they reformulated these, I'm not sure. But it'll be interesting to see. I don't ever plan to store the kayak on this. It is just gonna be to get from the car to the water and from the water to the car. So I don't ever see that being an issue, but it'll be interesting to see if they hold their shape up over time. So excited about this one. Okay, it looks like we're down to the final box. Excited to wrap this up. I really can't wait to get the kayak, start outfitting it, and then put all this stuff together get on the water. 
<laughs> ah, that's important too. So, <laughs> when I said I was getting everything I need to go kayak fishing, uh, specifically kayak bass fishing really, but um, like I said, I'm going to catch some walleye and trout as well and uh, we'll be having some fish dinners. But um, I already had, you probably see in the corner, I already had lots and lots of fishing equipment, lots of rod and reels, lots of lures, hooks, all that fun stuff. Um, this, however, I didn't have. So once again, did a lot of research. I didn't want to spend a ton of money on a net, but I also didn't want to either buy a net that's going to hurt the fish that I'll be returning or that's going to fall apart or break when I try to use it. So this is, uh, uh, I say Frabel. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how it's supposed to be pronounced, but it's an extendable net. Um, I think it was about 40 bucks. Like I said, I'll, I'll put all the, um, I'll put a link to everything in the comments, but I did do a lot of research to come down on this one. And uh, it seemed like this was the best quality net that wasn't an arm and a leg, super expensive. Let me know if there's anything you can think of that I need to make, to have a safe, fun fishing day on the water. All right, and say goodbye to Mr. Strawman. Bye, Mr. Strowman. Like I said, I'll probably be doing a video uh, installing the hoist system and then getting the kayak up off the floor in the garage. I'll do a video on connecting the amped 12 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery to the fish finder. And then I'll do a video on updating the software of the fish finder. Um, everything that I've read is it's super important to make sure that you're using latest software when you're running a fish finder um, because it will actually improve the quality of the images that you're gonna see and improved quality on the images is gonna give you a better chance of catching fish. So um, at the end of the day, that's what we're all about, right? We're, it's all just trying to catch some fish. So. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like and subscribe. Go into the comments, tell me what I did wrong. Um, let me know if there's any of these things that you'd like a closer look at. I'd be happy to um, put together a short video. And um, keep your lines tight.